Morning, everybody. We're going to start. Hello. <laughs> We're going to start with some worship songs. Um, the first one is Praise is Rising. Don't forget, please sing along, but with a mask. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, we turn to you. your presence all our fears are washed away washed away
alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death, to you alone belongs the highest Let 
Good morning and welcome to worship on a, another lovely summer's day. <laughs> uh, we're celebrating communion later on in the service and um, for the first time since lockdown we're going to have people coming up to the to front to receive. So the communion stewards will direct you, so please do as you're told. <laughs> we're going to operate a one-way system so we don't get sort of crowds of people, so you'll all be walking around in a circle and the band will be the first people to come and receive. But yeah, just listen to Lucy and Ali for that. Um, coffee, for the last time, will be at the meeting place on a Sunday. So big thanks to Lucy, Andrew, Poppy, and everybody else who's helped uh, that to happen. But as from next week, we will be, um, coffee's resuming back in church. So Nikki is very keen to get the rota filled up. And because initially we will s continue with table service, we might need more than two people um, for this to happen. So we want coffee to happen. So please do sign up, um, volunteer, and Nikki might sort of try and grab a few people. And oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a list. The roasters on the notice board. Okay. Uh, we had a, a nice little card, thank you card from Jenny, a lady who lives opposite Pam, um, who Linda took some flowers around to. So just a reminder: if you do know anybody um, that you feel as though is in would really appreciate some flowers at a particular time, just let Linda know and she will um, help out there. Just leads me to welcome Ray. Great to see you again, Ray. May God bless you as you lead us in worship. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Add my welcome to uh, prayers to you and to an unknown company. Um, out there who are, are Zooming. There might be millions out there. We don't know, do we? Um, but it's, technology is wonderful when it works. So thanks, thanks for those who are working the technology. Thanks to the band who are leading us in our, our music and singing. Um, I've heard that um, uh, Sylvia, her son, has died this week. And I think you all know that, Clive. And uh, she's very happy for us to pray for her at this time. So, can we do that together? Mm. And when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, then we find the self-same aching deep within the heart of God. Lord Jesus, at times like this, we ask all sorts of questions. Why, why, why? And each time you call us back to the foot of the cross, and the very least we know is that when we hurt, you hurt. And you, dear Father, know what it is to lose a son. And so we pray together for dear Sylvia that she may be able to lay hold of that wonderful truth so that it gives peace to her aching heart and that she will emerge through this time of great pain closer to you, stronger in every way. We praise you that Clive is in your hands and nothing, nothing, nothing can separate him from your love in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, I attended the funeral also of uh, Anthony Cross. Um, and many of you, I think, saw that online if you weren't at the, at the funeral. And that was a wonderful tribute to a wonderful man who served a wonderful God. So we also remember them also in our prayers at this time. <coughs> now, my um, first thoughts when I began to ask God, what do I, <coughs> what should be the theme of our service today? Um, I had in mind the theme of compassion. And then I was told that three weeks ago, a certain gentleman, your minister, 
uh, had that theme. <coughs> I thought, all right, I'm a little angry. Let's talk about anger today. <laughs> so Mr. Angry is in front of you at this moment. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so that's going to be our theme. But before we get angry together, let's be reminded of God's great mercy and compassion as we sing this beautiful hymn. There's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. <laughs> And our lives would be illumined by the presence of the Lord. There's nothing more wonderful, I believe, than knowing the presence of the Lord. And I pray that we will all know that. Sometimes it comes as a wonderful feeling, like a blanket of love being wrapped around you. Sometimes there's no great feeling, but we have a deep, deep assurance that nothing can ever separate us from God's loving presence. Um, but there's one thing I feel it's right to draw our attention to, especially before we have communion, but any time we come to worship, because Jesus said that we must deal with it. That's something called anger that I've mentioned. Um, especially if we're nursing anger against another person. Um, let's look on the screen at what St. Paul says about this. He, he warns in uh, very clear words. Don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. Don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. <laughs> Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting talk. Be gentle and sensitive with one another. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. That's pretty hard hitting, isn't it? And if that doesn't touch every one of us, it should do. Um, 
But let's be positive about this. This is not a time for, certainly not a time for me to beat you up. <laughs> um, if anyone needs to be beaten up over anger, it's me. So we all have that T-shirt, but rather it's a time to receive God's incredible forgiveness. So let's, in silence, first of all, just ask the Holy Spirit to nudge us, if necessary, just in case there's someone that we feel a grudge against for whatever reason. Um, they may have hurt us very much, and they were in the wrong. That's not the point. It's dealing with our reaction to that. So let's just close our eyes, and Holy Spirit, if you see anything in our hearts that makes it hard for you to come to us in this time of worship, that we may know your presence and blessing, please put your finger on that now. could be that our anger is directed against God himself. How often have I metaphorically shaken my fist at the sky? Why, God, did you let this happen to me? Have you been there? Lord, if you have convicted us of nursing anger against anyone, we ask you to erase our anger in this moment and fill our hearts with your compassion and your forgiveness. And then we can truly pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness and for the peace of your presence. Amen. <coughs> Sometimes, even though you hear those words, your sins are forgiven, we haven't forgiven ourselves. Yeah? That's, that's another person to forgive, yes? Okay. And for me not to receive God's forgiveness, that's arrogance, isn't it? It's pure grace anyway. It's pure grace. Who am I to deny the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah? Yeah? So if you're beating yourself up, stop it. Because the Lord is not beating you up. He's hugging you. Yes? You're forgiven. Forgive yourself. So far, we've focused on anger that is uh, selfish. It's sinful. It's unrighteous anger. But there is, as you know, a righteous anger. An anger that's not wrong, but it's so right. That's what I want us to think about at the moment. And the Bible, uh, Bible is full of stories of God's love, of course, um, but also his anger. Can you recall any times that Jesus was angry? You may talk. Call out those shout out, sorry. In the temple, the cleansing of the temple. Yeah, big one, that. Anything else he said? There's some words that, four, packed a punch. You Bible bashers, come on, let's have it. Whoa, come on. And I'll give you a clue. Fork tongue. Where he's fed up with the hypocrisy of the Jewish leaders. He said, you brood of vipers. How do you think you're going to escape hell? He wasn't smiling at that moment, was he? He was so angry. 
because hypocrisy is the top of the list of sins. Oh, yes. And another time, talking of little children, or maybe um, those who are young in the faith, new Christians whose faith is tender, but thinking of the most vulnerable people in society, in the world. He says, if anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, it would be better that a millstone, which is a pretty big stone, was put around his neck and he was chucked into the midst of the sea. Yeah? He was not smiling. So, Jesus could work up anger without any difficulty. Let's, someone mentioned the cleansing of the temple. You better watch a video clip of this story. Instead of hearing the Bible reading, it is the Bible reading, but it's one we can watch at the same time. Thank you. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. He ordered those who sold pigeons. Take them out of here! Stop making my father's house a marketplace! His disciples remembered that the scripture says, My devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remember that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. My devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. So much for gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Where's the compassion gone? It's gone nowhere. That explosion of white hot anger was an expression of his compassion. 
his compassion for worshippers who'd come to the temple who were being abused and exploited by the temple authorities. His anger was directed against them because he was compassionate. So all through this service, especially this sermon, <coughs> where I'm talking about the anger of God, it's about his compassion as well. He's angry because he loves us so much. In particular, in that incredible scene, there are particular abuses that he was aware of that didn't come out in, in detail then. Let's think about them. If we could have the next slide. This is a diagram of the temple. <coughs> you may not be able to read the writing. I don't know if you can, but I'm going to talk you through it. Notice, you can see the temple's got several courtyards, all at different raised levels, and the very building itself was intended to express a hierarchy of religious and social privilege. If you were at the top, you, you were important, and then went down to the lowest of the low. Now, the most sacred place of the temple, and I'll call out the numbers, uh, number three, can you see it? The holy place. And that led up to number one, which was the holy of holies, which only one man entered, and that was once a year, that was the high priest on the Day of Atonement. One man. That's how important it was in the thinking of the Jews. And then moving outwards, the next enclosed area is number five, and that's the court of the priests, where the priests offered worship and sacrifices on behalf of the people. Beyond that, next to it, number six is called the, car the court of Israel, and that was just for Jewish men to gather. Beyond that, number nine is the court of women, for Jewish women, because women were inferior. <laughs> yes, thank God, that's in theory, not so today. Um, and then the outermost court, number 12, is the court of Gentiles, and this is where this incident occurred. And this court was for both Jews and Gentiles of both sexes. The least privileged position of the Gentiles was strongly underlined by a notice in two languages, in Greek and Latin, above the entrance from the court of the Gentiles into number six, the court of Israel. And this is what the notice read. No foreigner is to go beyond the balustrade and the plaza of the temple zone. Whoever is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his death, which will follow. How is that for a welcome into the house of God? Go outside your church. Say to the next person walking along, do come into our church and we will kill you. Yes? That was the message. It's incredible, isn't it? Not that we are perfect, far from it. But can you, can you see now why Jesus was so angry? Yes? So angry. It doesn't finish there. What else did Jesus see to provoke this extreme reaction? It happened during the annual Jewish feast of the Passover. And according to Jewish law, every Jewish male who lived within 20 miles of the temple was expected to attend that feast. 
Many more, of course, over the years have been scattered huge distances away through persecution, etc., and live far, far away, but they would do their best to attend that feast at least once in their lifetime. So there may have been over two million Jews gathered in Jerusalem during that feast. And that was very good news for the high priest and the Jewish council who ran the temple, especially as every male Jew over 19 years of age was expected to pay a temple tax for the running of the temple throughout the year. And some of it lining the pockets of the priesthood. So they were very happy with this. Now a tax um, was half a shekel. That was the name of the, uh, one of the coins um, they, they handled. And that was nearly two days' wages. That was a lot of money, especially if you were a poor person. Um, but that wasn't the main reason why Jesus was so angry. Every worshipper was also obliged to offer an animal sacrifice in the worship. Uh, if you're well off, something like a bull or a cow, going down the pecking order, a sheep, goat, pigeon. Now, both the obligatory temple tax and the payment for the sacrifice had to be paid either in Galilean shekels or the shekels of the temple because other foreign Gentile coins were considered to be unclean and unfit to offer to God. Worshippers, therefore, had no choice but to exchange their coins for temple coins before they could be offered as temple tax or to buy an animal sacrifice. So the money changers that you saw Jesus turning over the tables of, they were having a ball. They might be charging nearly 20 times more for a pair of doves than a worshipper need, would have paid for if they bought them in the market just down the road. About 20 times more. How angry would you be if on your long-awaited worldwide cruise that you now are about to embark on, you had to exchange your British pound at that exchange rate. Yeah? Not happy bunnies. So why didn't the worshippers do their shopping in the local market at a cheaper price? Because Jewish law required the sacrifice to be perfect, unblemished without a flaw. And the priests appointed men to inspect the sacrifice, to make sure that it passed that high test, impossibly high standard. And if the sacrifice, therefore, had not been bought in the temple precincts, precincts and had been accepted as valid sacrifice, it wouldn't be accepted. It would be unfit. For purpose. So the worshipper was forced to pay nearly 20 times more for the sacrifice than for the same creature they could have got down the road. How angry are you now? Are you angry enough to feel that Jesus was totally justified in being as angry as he was, as so well depicted in that video clip? Are you there? understand something of why. And we know that was such a righteous anger. It was so, so right. And it was, I say again, an expression of his great compassion for those who were being abused. This is my Father's house, a place of worship for all people. To come in and say, Our Father, who is in heaven, and to hallow his name. That door was being slammed shut in the face of such people. and They were helpless to do anything about it. 
So what? Our mission here, your mission here, of course, is to take that gospel, good news of inclusivity. You know this, I'm telling you what you know, and praise God that in so many ways you in this church are doing it. Wonderful. Um, to be inclusive, and wherever you see any kind of injustice that has prevented you from fulfilling your God-given mission, you should be angry. You should be. And you should pray, Lord, here's this situation that I know is wrong. Help me to see it through your eyes. Help me to feel the anger you feel. Help me to say and do what you would say and do if you were in my shoes. We're going to sing a hymn in a moment, one that you know and love, at least I do. And in it, I've counted about ten mentions of injustice in our world today. So think about that as you go through. You don't have to count them, but just be aware of that. And it expresses, as I've been saying again and again, talks about the compassion of God. doesn't mention his anger at all, but now you know when we are thinking about compassion, you can't separate it from righteous anger. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come, change our love from a spark to a flame. And that, you know, is from that beautiful hymn, Beauty for Brokenness. Let's stand and sing that.
You know, it's your lovely practice. Um, if the Holy Spirit has given you a nudge and you feel led to share any experience of God's presence in recent days, that you do so now. So you're used to doing that, so let it happen. <laughs> I know the silence does not mean that God has not been doing anything in your life in the last week. Uh, and there's no pressure, of course. We're quite happy to uh, just leave it there. Okay. Moving slowly on, not swiftly. Um, and then over. Are you having coffee, by the way? Do you have coffee? Mm? You do have. At the meeting place. Oh, okay, so stories will tumble out then, no doubt. Okay, we, we need to be at the meeting place, go to see Evangel, etc. Um, right, so we, we come to uh, Holy Communion. Um, and uh, the words will be on the screen. So let's follow the service through. Christ is our peace. He has made us one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. This is the table of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him but want to love him more. So come, you who do not deserve his love, but long to receive his love as a gift. Come not because you are worthy, but because the Lord is worthy. Lord, when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name, you called us your children. When we have lost our way, you came in search of us. When we came back to you, you opened wide your arms in compassion. And now you celebrate our homecoming with a feast, offering not just bread and wine, but that we may be forgiven, healed, and made whole again. So in thanks and praise, we join our voices with those of your church on earth and in heaven. Blessing and honor and glory and power to our God forever and ever. Amen. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples. And while they were eating, he took a piece of bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Eat this, remembering that this is my body given for you. And then he took a cup of wine, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Drink this, remembering that my blood was shed for you. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Lord, we take bread and wine, trusting in your mercy, and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, 
but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. And so welcome to the table of the Lord.
Now let us pray as we say together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. And we sing our last hymn, There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son. Having been renewed as we have worshipped, we return now to the work that God has given each one of us, rejoicing in the power and presence of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with us at all times. Amen. 